What is going on guys and welcome to Don't Starve. Now guys, in this video, I'm going to be telling you guys how to basically survive 20 plus days. Now the reason why I'm doing this guys is because in one of my previous um, old Don't Starve guides, um, a person actually asked, how the hell do you survive 20 plus days? I love the game, I want to get into it, I like the way it looks, I think it looks fun, but I don't really know where to start. And I'm like, ah shit, but it was a comment, right? So I was like, wait! I'm gonna go make a video about this because I really want to just answer this because I'm, I'm assuming it's a question that a lot of people have because with Don't Starve, you're given no direction. You're literally just thrown into a, like a world filled with madness and you're basically expected to survive. Now you can do this by just fucking around the world a ton, just messing around, trying to get shit done, um, figuring things out as you move along. Or you can do what I did, which is kind of just jump on the wiki and learn about everything and anything and I'd be like, okay. Let's beat the shit out of this game, <laughs> which is kind of what I did. But um, anyways, guys, I'm not going to be in this guide. I'm essentially not going to be telling you guys exactly what to do because I feel like that's boring. It's not fun. Instead, I'm going to give you guys goals to shoot for because every time you complete one of these goals, it's going to make your journey on Don't Starve a lot more peaceful and a lot more not stressful. <laughs> for instance, making a crock pot, that basically makes it so you get everything out of your food so nothing is really wasted and things like that to just really make your life a lot easier and Don't Starve. Alright guys, so let's do this in a step-by-step -step format. Alright, so the first thing you're gonna have happen is Maxwell's gonna be kind of a dick to you, throw you in this island and say basically, give, better get food, blah blah, Maxwell on a asshole. Anyways, so next thing you're gonna wanna do guys is just generally collect everything around you. That means flint, grass, berries, um, carrots, um, basically a lot of food and a lot of flints and again, twigs. Just keep collecting things. Now this is a mentality that you're going to want to keep in the, your entire stay on Don't Starve. But uh, even more so for the first five to six days, like always keep that in the back of your mind. If you see something that looks cool, pick it up. And guys, a lot of people would actually tell you to make, um, cut down a tree so you have enough to make a campfire. I would actually not suggest this. I would actually suggest making a torch because your first goal that I'm gonna give you guys is basically keep running. Look around your island completely. Basically just run around the outskirts of your island, kind of getting a general outline of it because the most important thing in Don't Starve is knowing what your assets are and knowing where everything kind of is because where everything is is where your advantages are. So say, um, say you need to make a crock pot, that requires rocks, to know where a rock valley is was essential, you know, if you, you know, if winter's coming and you need beefalo, you need to shave beefalo, you need to know where they are, you know, all, all those kinds of things. So basically, just looking around your island should be the first, your priority for the first eight days, and I, again, I would just consider not stopping, there's enough food and berries around your island to basically hold you over for eight days. Um, with just the mass amount of carrots, berry bushes, and etc. If you keep running, you're probably gonna run into these things and always get food. So, yeah, just basically first goal, never stop running for the first eight days. Just keep running, looking around for shit. Um, hopefully you find Chester, which is an awesome, basically, a, like, a backpack. It's a massive inventory chest, which is pretty cool. And he respawns, and he can die, but he can, he's also great for aggro. Anyways, anyways, way off topic. So, we're gonna basically just be running around the island. That's your first goal for the first eight days. Again, collect everything you see. Um, preferably sticks, grass, berry bushes, and carrots. And, again, make a torch, run through the night. Now, if you come across a swamp, I would not suggest running through that unless you don't give a fuck. <laughs> unless you're just like, ah, I don't care. Um, I do it, but it's, uh, I mean, it's not smart. <laughs> it's like digging down in Minecraft. <laughs> it's that kind of thing. Anyways, also guys, another reason why I'm actually getting guys to run your asses off all over this island is because you need to find basically the two best forms of defense in this game, uh, which is either Beefalo or the Pig King slash Pig Village, whatever the hell you want to call it, pigs, essentially. Um, so yeah, you're going to need to find these two things. Now, in the Don't Starve community, there's a lot of people that suggest the beef alone. There's a lot of people that suggest uh, pig kings or the pig king or pigs. I would suggest pigs because they are they uh, respawn in a day, so if they die, it's not a big deal. And also, they drop a shit ton of resources and like just resources that are bad, great to use. And whereas beef alone, they don't really respawn that quick. It takes like a I think like five days for them to have a kid <laughs> and multiply and shit like that. So that's kind of a thing that I just don't want to deal with. Like exterminating a beefalo herd is just horrifying to me. But they do have their advantages. They do have the ability for you to actually uh, shave them and make a wool hat, which can help you survive winter. Anyways, I'm getting off topic, guys. The basically the reason why. <laughs> you're going to need to find these two things. That's where you're going to basically set your camp up. And your camp is really important because that's basically your, your camp. <laughs> it's going to basically be the way where you're going to have your science machine, which is the thing that helps you make things. And then it is also going to be where your crock pot's at, where that helps you um, make more better use of your food. Yeah, so you're going to need a camp, but you're also going to need defense. And that's why these two are kind of the best places to set up. But you do not want to plant your camp directly in the middle of these things because they do have hostile tendencies, I guess. Park your camp near their kind of camp, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, not close, but far enough away to the point where they won't beat the shit out of you. So, to break it down, find the Pig King, take a couple steps back, put down your camp, and then you should be safe from wolf attacks, because wolf attacks are the worst fucking thing ever. They will beat the hell out of you, that's why you need that defense. Um, the Pig King and his pig army uh, is usually good for the first 50 days, um, and then at that point they'll kind of sort of start to get overwhelmed by the uh, wolves that are coming for you, so... Yeah, but that, at that point you should have enough time to make a death pit, which is a whole nother thing. 
I have, I have a guide on that. That's actually why I'm making this video. It's because someone commented on that video. Okay. Alright guys, so now it's probably around day 8, you've looked around your island, you found the pig king, um, or the beef love, I mean, if you wanna do that, it's fine too. Anyways, basically you found where you want to stay, and you set up your camp. Basically just make a fire that, that has rocks around, I forget what it's called. A fire pit, that's what it's called. <laughs> Anyways, um, so after doing that guys, your next goal is to make a crock pot. And also guys, probably should've squeezed this in here, but you're watching this, so you probably haven't done any of this yet. Um, basically you're going to need rocks as well, so, uh, basically just make a pickaxe and hack down some rocks, you're going to need, I think, Two or three gold. I'll put it on the screen right now of how much gold you actually need. Um, and, and you're going to need some rocks. So when you see some stone, be sure to break some of that down. Get some gold. Get some rocks. Um, because you're going to need those rocks for your next goal. And your next goal, I guess. Alright guys, so again, like I said, at this point, you probably ran the perimeter of the island. Found out where generally everything is. You have some rocks in your bag, etc. Have some gold as well. You're going to want to make a science machine. Now what a science machine basically does, is it makes it so you can craft a ton of awesome things that are basically going to make your stay and don't starve a lot more comfortable. So the next thing you're going to want to do guys is build a crock pot. Now I'm going to be putting the thing. The, the recipe, I guess, on the screen right now. I believe it takes uh, charcoal, which how you get charcoal is by burning down a tree and then chopping that tree down. Um, and then it requires some rocks, which uh, you broke down some rocks, so you should have enough rocks to do that. So anyways, guys, the reason why that is so important, the crock pot, again, like I said, it's going to make the fucking name of the game is Don't Starve. It's basically going to make your food last twice as long and give you twice as much that you would not get out of your food otherwise of you not using crock pot. I think I said that in the most hardest understand way possible. It's supposed to be a guide. It's supposed to be helpful. Anyways, alright guys, so now I'm going to share with you guys one of the best recipes that probably everybody knows if you've played a little bit of Don't Starve. It's meatballs. Now what meatballs requires to make is one meat and any other filler, I think, besides honey. Because if you use honey, it won't make meatballs. It'll make um, honey nuggets, which is not as good as meatballs, I don't think. Which the reason why meatballs is so good is because it gives you 50 hunger, which is the thing that's always going to be taken down. Um, whereas your health, you, unless you get hit a lot, you're kind of being dumb and not running away from shit. Your, your health should be fine. <laughs> and guys, if you're playing Don't Starve, right, you're probably collecting any and everything, which is exactly what you're supposed to do in this game. Um, you're probably running out of inventory space, even if you make a bag or if you have chests, you're eventually gonna not be able to carry anything. So you're going to want to make a lot of chests. Now, the rate in which you make these chests is dependent on how much shit you have. <laughs> if you realize, if you're getting, if you keep getting amazing things like webs and like meat and stuff like that, and by that I mean just like however, much, if you have a lot of shit, make a lot of chests. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Alright guys, so if you're doing this all pretty efficiently, you're probably at day 12, and I probably should, actually no, you're probably at day 10, actually I probably should have mentioned this in general. Uh, the Hound Attack, you guys heard me mentioning that before, that's why we set up by the Pig King, or the uh, Beefalo, whichever one you choose, Pig King is better. Anyway, um, so whatever one you choose, when the Pounds come, which I think is day 10 or day 9, um, you're going to want to run there, and make a fire just in case... The game really doesn't like you, and they come at the brink of dawn, where they're fucking nice just coming, then just make a fire. There should only be two, so you should be able to outrun them. The kind of nice thing about the wolves is that their bite animation slows them down, so they can never hit you, as long as you keep moving forward. Also, don't make sharp corners, because you're probably going to get your head kicked in if you do that, because they'll... The animation is a pretty big aerial effect. Anyways, alright guys, so again, around day 12, you should have everything like this kind of done. You should have seen the island, you should have your crock pot, you should have your um, chest, you should have your science machine. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is make it so your food can actually last quite a long time, so you can go out and do stuff in the world space. So what you're going to need for this is a fridge. Now, you're going to need gears. Now, there's two ways to get gears. One of the ways is by getting a shovel and go digging up graves like a fucking psychopath. Um, but, you know, fight, we're on an island, so we can, we can afford to be a little insane. In fact, we're encouraged to do so, because there's items that we need from to get, because we're going to- anyways, but there is a negative to digging up graves, we go a little bit mad and insane and stuff like that, so that's a negative, but that can easily be fixed by just eating some cooked green mushrooms, which come out in dawn, I think, which is the red part of the day, I guess. Anyways, um, yeah, so just cook those, that's the most- if you don't cook them, you're going to go more insane, but if you cook them, you're going to get less insane, it's going to take your insanity to a new level. Not- not insanity, sanity- okay, anyways. Now, with the whole ding up graves, there's not a for sure chance that you're going to actually obtain gears. Um, you're going to need two gears, and when you dig up a grave, you're not for sure guaranteed this, uh, drop. It's just random as hell. You can get, like, a, uh, a life amulet or a, uh, or a blue gem, something like that. It's not guaranteed. Um, so, yeah. But the other way, guys, is actually by killing a clockwork... Guard. Now you can do this like a boss and like strap on some like wooden armor. If you killed a pig or something, you can put on its helmet and just make yourself really durable and just go beat the shit out of him. But they tend to travel in groups and shit, so that's not the best idea. You probably get wrecked. I'm just being real with you. It's it's, it's a badass way to do it, but you're probably gonna die. Don't starve is not meant for badass, it's meant for smart people that abuse everything. <laughs> and with that being said, guys, the best way to kind of deal with conflict in this game is by letting the things around you deal with it for you. So say if they're set up around beefalo, hitting them or luring him to a beefalo or or, uh, fucking pigs, something like that. So yeah, just manipulate things in the world space to work for you. Again, if there's a spider nest right by him, get spiders involved, get him to kick this, the, the clockwork guy head in. It's like a 
it's like a horse. I don't, I, I don't even, I'll put a picture on screen. I don't think I have gameplay of it. But yeah, basically just kill it and it drops, I think for sure, gears all the time. Um, and yeah, that's the, that's it. And um, how you locate them is they're on a random uh, part of the map. And also if you see this guy, don't fight them. <laughs> if you see this fucking thing, it's a clockwork chess piece, whatever the hell you call it, it will insta-kill your health, especially if you're just starting, so don't go crazy yet. Do the graves first, the graves don't work, then do this. But again, manipulate everything in the world space to work for you. That's kind of just don't starve in general. Alright guys, so that's pretty much it. That's how you survive the first 20 days. If you're able to get these goals, your time don't starve is going to be a lot more less stressful and a lot more just generally fun, and you got a lot more wiggle room. But now guys, what are you supposed to do after this? Like, after the 20 days? Again, you can, it depends on the person. <laughs> if, you're, if you're so if you're very new to don't starve, don't really know how to do things really you're still trying to navigate the, the menus and stuff like that it may take you up to 20 days it may take you up to day 14 you know something something like that um but what do you do um after this well guys now we're going to start focusing on food so building gardens uh i would suggest advanced gardens not the shitty dirt ones making uh, beehives or whatever the hell you call them. basically it's like your own personal honey generator kind of thing i don't know what it's called I'm gonna don't start bad with names, just being honest. So yeah, guys, basically just working on your food. Now, I wanna give you guys a little, uh, couple tips here. One, I would highly suggest picking up mushrooms. Any mushroom of any sort, pick it up and throw it in your fridge, because mushrooms are pretty much the picture-perfect, uh, filler food. They don't really have anything specifically that they can make, or that they have to do with recipes-wise, so just putting it with one meat and four mushrooms will almost guarantee you meatballs all the time, just because, again, they don't have any other re recipes really attached to them. That's why that happens. But now, guys, how do you survive winter and those kinds of things? So now, guys, basically, I'm going to you, share with you guys one of the best combos that I can't really show you guys. I can only really explain. Um, so essentially, you're going to want wreaths. Now, wreaths are you, you acquire them through swamps. So get, go to the swamp, pick up some wreaths, and basically, you're going to want to make a bird cage. Then you're going to want to make a bird net or uh, a trap. And then you catch a bird, put it in the cage, and then basically, you've just got one of the best things in the game. And it's not that crazy hard to get. Now, the reason why this is so good is because you can feed that beautiful baby bird that meat, and he will drop you an egg. Now, one, the reason why eggs are so great, especially in this instance, is because they are a limitless food source. Now, the reason why they're limitless is because if you cook um, the egg and you feed it to the mom, it will eat its children and give you another fresh egg, so essentially they never rot. Which is kind of awesome, but also horrifying, if you think about it. Anyways, um, not important. But also, if you cook monster meat, or really any meat, and give it to the bird, he will give you eggs. So if, say, if you have four monster meat because you just survived a ton of wolves, or say if you just farmed a ton of spiders, or whatever, you have a lot of monster meat. If you throw that all in the crock pot, you're gonna get monster lasagna, which can damage you. Very bad, don't eat it. But if you cook all that monster meat, give it to the bird. He will give you enough eggs, and you throw one monster meat in there with any type of egg, and it will make you meatballs. So that's something how to get through winter. Say if you have a, a spider farm near you, Farm the spiders, get some meat, get one monster meat, throw it in the crock pot, cook it, you're golden. That's how kind of I survived winter, just by farming spiders, and usually I got monster meat, and then I just give it to my bird, he'd eat it, drop me an egg, and I'd throw three eggs in there, or mushrooms, because mushrooms also work in uh, winter, and then just throw one monster meat in there, and it would make, and it would make meatballs, and that's how I kind of survived winter. So yeah, guys, essentially just keep making more farms, keep making, uh, dig up some berry bushes, you're going to want to also, I should mention this, you're also going to want to take the things around you, like grass or uh, twigs, and set them up around your uh, camp, just so you don't have to walk a mile to get them, or they're always like spaced out so much, where it's like, ah, god damn it, I gotta run ten feet to get this damn thing. So yeah, you don't want that, you want to want to draw it in, um, if you're playing of giants make little bunches of things like a little bunch here a little bunch here anyways we're not talking about don't we're not talking about rain of giants we're just talking about um normal don't starve so yeah that's how to survive the first um 20 days plus so again you're just going to want to keep building your arsenal up and that essentially means more food which is the again don't starve you basically if you get if you get that covered you're basically able to do so many more things i said basically a lot i repeat words a lot that's yeah Anyways, anyways, guys, the devil lesson has been don't starve, how to survive the 20 days plus for anyone who's a newcomer to the game, um, that should help. Again, step one, look around your island as much as you can. Step two, set up your base. Step three, make your essentials, crock pot, chest, science machine, probably would come first, fridge, which is kind of hard to get, but also not really, depending on what your situation is, and then just making farms and other ways of getting food. Anyways, guys, hopefully that helped, this has been my guide on don't starve, how to survive the 20 days, I already made my outro, bye guys! Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video, by the way, hope this guide helped, kind of was an abrupt ending on my part, but anyways, um, nevertheless guys, I just want to let you guys know that I did actually do a let's play of Don't Starve, in case you guys want like a kind of a slower rundown of how you survive in Reign of Giants, not quite a guide form, I might make a guide on how to survive Reign of Giants, but it's gonna be iffy, I'm not sure how to really explain how to do it, so that's why I'm like, ah, I'm not sure. anyways, um, nevertheless guys, if you guys want to go check out that, that sh there should be a link on the screen, if there's nothing, I'm an asshole, and I'm sorry, but if there is, then yeah, bye guys!